Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome, welcome to Lost Initiative. A bit of a wrap-up discussion, announcement show, uh, teaser as what's to come in the future, and all kinds of good stuff with the, myself and Scott, the two Lost Initiative boys. Uh, hey, Scott, what's up, homie? Hello, uh, homie. How's it going? Not bad, not bad. Yourself? Have not a busy bad. week? Yeah, man. Uh, it's been super, super busy for me. Um, just a lot, of, a lot of things, a lot of projects that are, are nearing their uh, either end or uh, I'm at the tail end of prep to launch them. Mm. Um, that kind of thing. Like, as far as, like, personal things are concerned, Ken the Kenshi series did so well that I want to take that style and, and put it into other videos as well. So we're working on how to do that, and it's been a lot of, a lot of work on that end. Um, and obviously, D&D uh, last week was a, was a big week for us because it ended. It was Trig's Farewell. Uh, in case you missed that, you know, it's already, it's already live on the YouTube channel. If you, if you didn't it took catch us it so long to get rid of Maggie, <laughs> I mean, seriously, two weeks it's straight. Not, God damn it. No, no. I mean, <laughs> over two years. <laughs> that's oh, true. God. Over two years now. It's, that's insane. Um, but after, after that, me and Scott kind of put our heads together because what we like to do here, uh, on Lost Initiative after, you know, a couple of years of, of running shows and figuring what works and what doesn't, uh, is we kind of settled on like a, a 10 ish week run for seasons more or less get depending on how things go and each season usually continues the story from before um but last week was we kind of decided it was a good season ender for season two of star wars uh it kind of came they it ended maggie's story in such a way that was you know you like all characters that you really enjoy like to go that she got to become a veritable god of her people which is kind of cool with a little bit of a star wars twist um and then the next step in that storyline is back into the depths of of the major plot right and that alone is going to be a season on into in and of in and of itself so instead of wrapping things a season up this week and only really having like maybe an hour of content and then a bunch of filler um we decided honestly, last week that's that that's what it would have been we would have we would have had wade angry the whole time until you gave him money <laughs> yeah yeah you would have not given him money <laughs> that's not true angry. you would have been angry for another half hour and then, <laughs> and then it would have been done you're right um but but yeah it would have been filler stuff so we figured last week was kind of the perfect wrap-up to a season so we kind of let it go we decided like that's going to be the season wrap-up and then we we started discussing well where do we want to go from here um we've done two straight season of star wars now with a still story to tell but uh at the same time we want to make sure we're constantly trying new things and telling new stories uh, so that's where uh, where we kind of are mentally here and where we're going to start announcing some things. I don't know if I want to hand it to Scott here and let him discuss uh, what we've been talking about, but um, that's kind of my hello. That's my intro. Well, so as you said, we wrapped up Star Wars. So that is um, that is actually not 100% done by any stretch of the imagination. For yeah, for those who are Star Wars fans. Yeah, yeah if, if, if we end the campaign forevermore and Wade doesn't get paid, <laughs> There's a really good chance next time uh, uh, he sees Mike in real life, Mike's going to get a broken nose. So uh, <laughs> um, we definitely are not shutting that down permanently. No. But we are going to be doing a, a, a smaller uh, campaign going on moving forward. This is actually going to take place to see a chant for Shadowrun. That's funny. Uh, not Shadowrun, the, one, Shadowrun this time. We're actually going to do uh, a 5e campaign. But most importantly, I'm sure like sign on this. Uh, this is going to be taking place uh, Dungeons Dragons, 5th edition. It's actually taking place in Faerun. It's going to take place Sword Coast North-ish, maybe inland a little bit more. It's also going to take place post the events of Edge of Morality, same universe. That's so, the important announcement. That's the big yeah. one. So many people since we've ended Edge of Morality have said, what, what Edge of Morality, what happens next? Where, when are we going to see more of that? Uh, we have made attempts to try and get the band back together to wrap it up. Will the story. It, it will happen! It will happen! Maybe one day it will happen. Um, it's very difficult because everybody's super busy. But the sec like the next best option for us is to approach that same, like you said, same universe in the future after the events have taken place with a different party and a different crew. And then maybe they stumble into what ended up happening to one of them. We'll see. Um, to answer the question from Darkstalker out there and anybody else is still wondering what Star Wars, just to be clear, Star Wars, the plan is not for it to be gone forever. It's actually going to be on hiatus for one to two seasons of us doing other shows, including the one that we're announcing right now. And then the plan is to bring back Star Wars and move it forward, uh, lest Mike's life lay in Wade's hands. So. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, this this particular thing we're talking about should only be about a six-ish ep. It's like a mini little campaign. It's kind of just a mini story in this world. Uh, yeah. So we are going to be jumping from um, Wednesday nights. We'll no longer be Star Wars for the uh, short future. Uh, and Scott will be taking over as DM. So he'll have uh, Wednesday and Thursday nights. I can't trust you in Faerun. That No, I don't want I don't, want, I don't ever want to touch Faerun as a DM ever. I just, that's a, that's a mess that I don't need to, to get involved. Uh, so we're going to have like a nice little mini campaign there. And then once that wraps up, we'll either dive right back into Star Wars or we'll do another mini one and then go to Star Wars. Exactly, we'll, yeah. we're going to feel things out. Yeah. Um, on top of that, uh, it also means new cast members. We're going to have all kinds of new guests. Um, we can definitely announce our Thursday guest. So, uh, and then we'll I'll let Scott talk about the Wednesday guest. So Thursday, if you don't know, that's our every other week Dark Sun campaign. Um, we just wrapped up the the first no the second Dude, season of it. You want to talk about a, an ending? We had we had multiple party members. Uh, well, two of them confirmed gained some sort of uh, uh, of minor divinity. Yes, two of them confirms definitely happened. I'm going to get into the rules about that in a second because I'm actually pretty excited about that. Um, and then we don't know exactly what happened to Dave's character. Honestly, I constructed that in a way that anyone that's deep into D and D lore probably knows what happened to his character but i wanted to throw some like nerd bombs out there and mm, yeah, see if anybody kind of picked up the hints um dave got a little obvious at one point and i, I, was, in my head, I was like shh, shh, shh. don't tell anybody <laughs> <Shut up. laughs> but, but um but yeah since but, since dave you know became a, a father for a second time um and on ollie's time yeah, he you got know, me beat yeah what he's got fuck? you beat uh and, beat. and ollie's time was was too tough to really work with uh, yeah. We're down both of our cast members, just me and Wade, and we could do a duo, but we thought... Actually, we... I won't lie. I thought about doing a duo. I actually was like, all right, guys, I'm actually a little excited. If we were on just you two, and the fact, going into it with the with the uh, excitement and almost the plan to have a duo campaign is one of the reasons why I pushed for like the divine kind of like idea, like when yeah. Dave started describing what he was doing, I really wanted to like take that and like run with it because... Um, because uh, I was like, ooh, this is something I can, ooh, this is exciting. But now that we have, we have a, Yeah, we have a third member. We actually ended up picking up, we, we, we knew we were going to do duo. At most, we wanted to do three because the story kind of became not accurate. You wanted to go four? There's you wanted, four in that game. No, no, I know there were, wait, the in upcoming, there's going to be four? Yeah. I only know one. Maybe you need to check your Twitter DMs. And maybe, look at who's maybe. In the conversation. No, I saw that conversation. <laughs> I didn't know that, that 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 I thought that for some reason was. Oh, I didn't realize. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> we have four. I <laughs> uh, just looked at my Twitter DM. Okay, so we're gonna have two more people joining us for for Dark Sun. Uh, one is Bob Mus uh, Muskierum. You might know him uh, from Wade Circle. Uh, he plays games with him on the channel, Markiplier's channel, all that other stuff. Uh, and the other one is going to be Crank Gameplays. Uh, I've, I've met Crank passingly very quickly once at a con, but other than that, I don't really know uh, much about him. So them two will be jumping into the Dark Sun campaign for every other Thursday uh, and filling out those two slots for dear old Doc's Dark Sun. We don't know what they're going to be playing, but... But if you are part of the Patreon, you will be getting character creation videos likely for all those characters sent over that way. So if you want a little extra content, that'll be in the, uh, you can check out the link below and, and go check it out. But yeah, Bob and uh, Crank Gameplays as well as myself and Wade will be sticking around for Thursday. Um, it was, and the, the fun part about that game, I, I have to say, I'm like really excited about it. And this kind of goes into what we're going to stream about tomorrow is because of what we just did to their characters. Again, I, we're going to hold that little egg and talk about that in a couple minutes, but I'm just really excited about what we're going to be doing with Thursdays because of that. And I kind of feel bad for the PCs that aren't super familiar with tabletop slash, you know, how hard Pathfinder can be. So yeah. they're, they're kind of like, they're, they're walking going, in, like they're like, jumping into the deep end. Uh, it's like worse though <laughs> but, that, but hey listen make it if work. somebody like wade can figure it out you know yeah um yeah. you will not see them on tomorrow's show tomorrow's show is going to be just me and wade leveling our characters up i'm pretty sure correct on stream it's only going to be the two of you guys leveling up and um that's because very likely we're just uh getting confirmations for everything very likely what we're actually going to be doing is recording the care uh the offline uh character creation um, uh, like when we're all called that we're all together and then we'll just release it to one of our Patreon tiers, probably one of the lower uh, Patreon tiers that we have as like a thank you to our Patreons that keep supporting and whatnot. And again, we could touch a bit more on Patreon in a second. Go ahead, Mike. Um, well, that's all I got. Wednesday. Oh, so let's talk about Wednesday. Did oh, yeah. Who's yes. joining us? So you, I was going to hand Wednesday to you. So all right, you perfect. <laughs> so, so I'm excited to talk about Wednesday in general and I'm a little bit hyped to talk about just like a little bit of uh, of, of Faerun in general, but so um, on Wednesday, definitely joining us is um, is Patrick Static. 
uh, is going to be joining us on Wednesdays. That is a, a confirmed, definitive, definitely going to be here for the games. There is a whole bunch of chatter going on one of my other monitors right now. Don't of, worry about it. Don't worry yeah, about exactly. it. It's nothing important. People. It's literally nothing important right now. It's just introductions. No, no, no. no. It's uh, uh, because there's most likely a fourth person joining us on yes. Wednesdays as well. We're Correct. just confirming who that fourth person is. It's one of like three different people at the moment. <laughs> so so we're, we're just kind of confirming who that is. So we're not going to announce yet. So Wednesday nights will be me DMing a 5e campaign in Forgotten Realms taking place in the same universe as Edge of Morality taking place after the end of Edge of Morality. How much time afterwards? Good question. Um, and uh, uh, the PC, the DM will be me. The PCs will be Mathis, uh, uh, Lord Minion, believe, and uh, Patrick Static with a fourth, most likely not announcing who they are yet. Cover all that? I think that's everything. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, that's the show announcements. Um, Perfect. Perfect. And there's Patrick Static in chat. Oh, God, that's hey! an emo already. Oh, you made it your emo. I hate you. <laughs> did you see that trailer? I did not see the trailer. I saw oh. the picture and didn't hate it as much as other people. It just looks like it, the reason. Listen, I let, let me put it this way. It's a live action Disney movie that actually has action that is live. No, as opposed yeah, yeah, yeah. to Lion King, which is like all CGI. Live action CGI. No, the reason I hate, I don't hate Blue Will Smith. Like most people think that like most people hate. It just looks like his face was poorly copy pasted onto a CGI body. It just looks weird and off. Again, I didn't see the the, the trailer yet. I don't like watching trailers in general because I feel like they, they kind of ruin movies. Oh, yeah. Jafar is, so. like, young and hot. Hey, I'm down with that. <laughs> that's a thing. Uh, I'll get me I'll get me some – I'll just spread ah, some Jafar on some – Maybe that's something we also should cover. Uh, so we'll do a quick compartmentalized re recap of what maybe some people missed uh, as far as announcements are concerned. One, Star Wars Season 2. Last week was the season finale. Because that was the season finale, we're going to take a small break between season two and season three. And we're going to run a mini campaign in the middle. The first mini campaign that we're going to be playing is going to be around a six episode, fifth edition Faerun campaign that takes place in the same universe as Edge of Morality did, but with a different party and after the events of Edge of Morality. So if you watched Edge of Morality and wanted to see what happened there, you can check it out and go watch that. It's all on YouTube right now. That's like, what, 70 something episodes, I think? 32. 32 oh, weeks. I, I exaggerated that. <laughs> you, doubled you doubled it. You doubled it. crazy. <laughs> Holy crap. Well, it's because, uh, again, like how long we played for. And in the old, I, I keep thinking, because that was our first game online together, yeah, right? it was. Just prior to that, any campaign we ever did was you were there every week. You yeah. assumed in a 52-week year, you played 48 games. Yes. You know, 48 sessions. So yep. it went for over a year, I assume, over 50 sessions. Yeah, Maybe exactly. 50. Nope. So anyways, go ahead. Uh, so that being said, uh, the campaign on Wednesday will be run by Scott, obviously. He will be DMing. We'll be joined by myself and Wade, uh, obviously. And Patrick Static will be joining the Wednesday campaign and a fourth member that we can't really announce yet because we're still figuring things out. That does mean the dark side version of Star Wars is over, however, since Maggie was the main character of the dark side campaign uh, and it was run so infrequently it was just an emergency yeah, was, thing that, uh, unfortunately yeah i just have to that that had to evolve several times it went a bit wonky i'm not lying i would love to do a dark side game um oh yeah me too it, i i probably will not set it at all in that little bubble verse thing that, yeah. that's just gonna just straight die like it's just it's it, it just didn't work um, but I would love to run a dark side campaign in the future, whether it be Mike running it or myself. I would love to do that in the future. Probably me. I'm more forgiving um, <laughs> in, in that system. And uh, and I think that would be a lot of a lot of fun to do. But but unfortunately, Aris Vula and all of them, other nameless characters. Kuka, <laughs> Kuka was great. Kuka, um, uh, are, are gone. Lotris, the, the guy who just sat there and spouted lore. And that's it. Yeah. Uh, right, but, so, so, so that so, that so, wraps up. So that's Wednesday. Yep. Thursdays, every other Dark Sun will continue. We'll be moving into season three since we lost two of the four players. We're going to be picking up a third, and that third is going to be uh, Ethan. Picking up, picking up a third and a fourth. And a fourth, sorry. Uh, a third and a fourth. Let me, let me talk about let me talk about this. All right, go okay. for it. Okay, so before we come back to Wednesday, where I just want to talk a little bit of Lost in the as I um um Faerun because I, I love Faerun. It makes me it makes me happy. I know Mike loves Faerun too. It's both of our second favorite worlds that um uh, standard D and D like box worlds um uh, prefab worlds um but anyways so uh the way thursday is going to work so um uh, rule system for that game uh if you happen to be familiar with pathfinder at all i i misread something um just prior to that session in like prep for um because i i know dave dave has been a pc of mine for well over 10 years and i knew he had like this gleam in his eyes so i kind of knew where he was going so i, I had a, this inkling of so, so i i 
unfortunately read Pathfinder Mystic Rules and got confused as opposed to Pathfinder Mythic Rules. So to be clear, the way that um, they're actually going to be doing, um, uh, as a correction to what I said at the end of last session, instead of them coming back as Divine Rank 0 under the 3.5, 3.0 technically, uh, rules being ported into Pathfinder, which I don't like porting D&D rules into Pathfinder. They, don't, they work wonky. Um, I don't believe reverse compatibility works there. We're actually going to be using the Pathfinder Mythic Rules. So it's going to be really exciting for them because not only do their characters level up to level seven, this is uh, Mathis and, and, and Wade, um, but on top of that, their, um, uh, uh, my apologies, not only do they go up to level seven, they're gaining a few ranks in, in, in Mythic. So we're going to have fun tomorrow night streaming the leveling up and the Mythicifying their characters for that. For the other two PCs coming on board, because they're coming in with these, if you just like were playing like a fifth level rogue and you hung out with Hercules, you'd be like, Guys, I kind of feel like I'm useless here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. So to compensate for that, I really want to work with those PCs. I really want to get some awesome ideas of what they want to do that are a little bit outside of the box. I, I won't lie. I, the two PCs that are coming in, I have never met them beyond very quick uh, Twitter DM chats. I, I have had no conversations. I have no idea what their expectations are uh, or, or what kind of characters they want to play. And I'm very excited about this because we're doing that tomorrow night. Like I said, the plan is to record it and release it. Um, but uh, I want to make characters that for them are going to feel powerful so whether it be they play an obnoxious race to kind of like uh, uh jump that power gap or if they play a higher level character or whatever it is that they they want to do but it's going to feel very dark sun and i i think that's going to be a, a a huge fun of it but i think it is important to announce that the season the first session uh the season opening of season three of dark sun is actually not going to have those two being pcs in it no it's actually only going to have uh mike and wade and that's just for continuity of of how the last session like uh ended and and whatnot and i also want to be clear about uh the way we're, we're directing that and i'm going to reiterate this tomorrow um very briefly though because i'm not want to waste character leveling on this kind of crap but um uh it's supposed to feel like a almost like a different game entirely so we want to kind of treat the first two um uh seasons as almost being like a prequel for going into the new campaign and, and how it is that we kind of approach dark sun moving forward because one of the cool things about dark sun is it's meant to be a higher level campaign it's meant to feel like oh, everything around me is dangerous and and i, I won't lie i, I kind of had on kitty gloves when i was dealing with them beforehand but giving them the mythic levels i can now bitch slap them left and right and if they can't handle it i'm sorry that's that's between you and, and, and well, well it's really you and me really because yeah. <laughs> you'll be the one that killed us yeah well yeah i mean <laughs> it's probably weird let's be serious it's also probably. true also yeah. true yeah but um uh, listen i'm funny one i'm long-winded you know that <laughs> yeah scott likes to talk a lot um so so yeah that's uh that's the way that we're going to be handling um uh the pathfinder game pathfinder level seven a couple ranks of the mythic rules uh the other part uh party members coming on are gonna i have no idea what they're gonna make but it's gonna be i want them to feel like mm, we belong here next to these uh, divine spark um, um um characters um anything you want to add to to that campaign mike are you good? no i think that's it i mean there's not much more we can really add because we don't know the details of, of certain things quite yet but yep. what we what we do know you all know now so i won't lie i haven't started writing the story yet Pff, i have to know what you guys are playing before I write the story. <laughs> yeah exactly you can't really <laughs> plan done. that out yet nothing done I'm like, all right where's it going well we're not going back to rame we all we all agree yeah <laughs> i'm not going back to rame all right let's keep moving forward let's keep <laughs> So, um, all right, uh, back to, I guess, um, um, Wednesdays, right? I guess so, yeah. Yeah, so um, uh, have uh, just complete sidebar. Um, I didn't uh, intend on asking this, but do you have any idea what you want to play coming into this yet? Any concepts, any thoughts? No, zero. Uh, Chat, since... I'm going to give you the opportunity right now to start throwing ideas at Mike. Remember... Look at his hair. Mike's kind of an emo kid. So um, throw ideas at Mike for what you think would be fun for him to play. Just just, just go ham with it. Um, I saw Wizard, so I guess that's, that's what I'm playing. No, oh, come on. Oh, that's your first. <laughs> well, there was, there was a movement for a long while on um, the other Discord that I'm a part of, the False Pretenses Discord I'm a part of, where, because um, it was, what, what did people say? Um, they said, hate thonk. And then... Uh, uh, no, how, what, what, how did we always say that? Uh, false pretenses, people, remind me. Because um, Thonk's name backwards is pronounced not. Oh, is it? yeah, that's true. Not. Yeah. I'll just so play like a, I'll just play like a lawful good. 
uh, I guess Paladin would probably be the opposite of, of what he kind of was. Well, you could maintain Cleric, or if yeah. you want to truly go a, a, a flip, you can do awful good like Wizard, so Arcane versus Divine, mm, yeah, or yeah, you can do go 100% flip. Magic entirely, but... Drunken Master Monk, Gunslinger, Sorcerer, a Drunk, classic. Uh, Necromancer. Never really dipped into Necromancy much. Yeah, you never could. Yeah, I always watched... Watch Dave. Yeah, yeah, because I always play with Dave, and Dave always, like... The way, because he, he knew the rules in and out, he he kind of min maxed the shit out of it. He was a very oh. good necromancer, always. Well, yeah, he he. I mean, it's the stereotype that he likes to fit into. Yeah. It's what it's what excites him and whatnot. And um, we could so, go, we honestly, can do dwarven job. binder. Oh, uh, I love that. <laughs> you get anybody that's listened to our our uh, war stories when we put out the few of them before, or listen to our old podcasty esh um streams you've heard me talk about this dwarven binder i won't lie i have i think three different versions of dwarven binder kind of like put to the side a pathfinder version of it um uh, uh, there was um like rules for it a um a slightly modified uh 3.5 rules version of it and a fifth edition rules for it in case you wanted to build it again um just to make sure that at the ready log and you're like all right scott i want i want to do that character i'm like bam i got it for you right here. i got it <laughs> I've oh you know I, I like that character, but I don't know if I would want to do that in a mini campaign because no, no, he's no, a no. long one. I, it's true. Um, we don't. I don't think we've ever seen a druid on the show yet. Druid could be a lot of fun. Um, my apologies. Yeah, so druid. Um, my, druid. my phone just started going off like crazy. So yeah, no, I agree. A druid could absolutely be um, uh, a fun one to have on there. The closest to a druid we had was um, our guest there, um, Slaughtercat. Uh, yeah, he yeah. played the ranger. That's and, right. Um, yeah, I, I love that that concept that he played. It was a lot of fun. So actually, um, uh, no, never mind. But that was a, a, that was a cool a concept. circle of spores, Druid. I don't know what that means, but <laughs> yeah, that's right. You'll learn. You'll learn. <laughs> oh yeah, is that how it works? You can do the you can do the hacksaw, uh, the the moon druid that you know. And uh, anyways, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So, so we got some we got some plans coming up, characters and whatnot. Um, if you if you missed if you missed all the announcements, we're not going to go over them another time. But you can watch the vod afterward, or it'll go up on YouTube where we talk about it. But uh, other than that, I think we you know that's like the big stuff for the show that we wanted to talk about. I can't think of anything else. Can you? Um, for for big announcey things, no. It's just I wanted to uh, uh, to chat about just kind of like Feyrune in general because we haven't been there in a long while, and I want to kind of like stir that pot and get our, our brain our juices flowing and whatnot. So. Um, um, I suppose uh, to, to do so, um, oh, first, I guess we can talk a little bit about uh, Edge of Morality, because, you know, we do have viewers here that did not watch Edge of Morality before. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I mean, I honestly don't care about giving away spoilers because I don't know, forever. Yeah, if you don't want Edge of Morality spoilers, it's like two years too late. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's OK. So, I mean, honestly, like, that's kind of like we do them all the time. Mathis that's... doesn't role play Psycho as much. What? Maybe not on the show I haven't, though I would Wait. consider Thonk a psycho. Well, yeah, Th Thonk was, was uh, uh, methodical. Like, he was, like, almost dexter -esque. He was, contr he was controlled psych you know? psychopathy. Yeah, uh, he, was, he was really good. And um, you played a fucking tortured soul when you played his replacement in that campaign, even though he only lasted so many sessions. I don't even remember where the game ended. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the vision, the visionary. Ander, yeah. Ander, yeah. Uh, but I want to say psycho. Uh, but uh, you're currently running over and roll for it. You're running a, a, a vampire campaign. Oh, yeah. And I think if you were looking for Mike to be any degree of psychotic, um, you'd be able to find that over in that campaign. That was my question about that. Yeah, so. I mean, that's, I mean, yeah, all vampires are psychotic, so. Um, other than that, I think we just wanted to kind of recap the end of Star Wars a bit, talk a bit about Faerun for those who don't know. Uh, and then sure, uh, I'll let you I let you do Star Wars because I, I I think like when we pick Star Wars back up too, there'll be a uh, a, a tiny uh, time hop like we tend to do. Well, like, I'm actually I, there's not much so. I can really say about it other than I'm happy with the way it went. Um, there were multiple ways I figured that was gonna go. Uh, this was the most likely scenario, and I'm, I'm glad I was right finally once that the most likely scenario is the one that it actually ended up playing out because every other time it's usually the other way around. Um, I love that Wade is asking who's DMing Wednesdays. <laughs> wait, you know who's DMing Wednesdays. But it's, just, it's just, I'm sorry, it's just funny. Wade's like, wait, so what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I'm actually quite happy with, with, uh, with how it actually all went down. Um, you know, I, I like to have my weird dark twist on things so that the body being there and, and bloated and being kind of preserved by the machine. I, I really enjoyed being able to kind of lay that out before you. My guess was that Trig was going to 
attempt to plug himself in and take over. Um, what he was going to do after that, I wasn't sure. Uh, if he wanted people to know, I wasn't sure. I also kind of had a, had a like a, almost like a 50-50 that you guys were just going to blow the joint. And um, maybe like you'd have Trig open up the, the mouth of a fish and then everybody would jump in the fish and Trig would unplug and join you. And then hope you guys would get up there in time or what have you and just blow the place up and let the fish kind of just either die off or, or whatever and just the god disappears. There were a bunch of different ways, but I'm happy with, with how this one went. So, so I'm weighing in here. One, um, Maggie is is wonderful and for a lot of reasons. Oh, know, yeah. Sh shout out, much mag love out there. Um, uh, you know, she's been with us for a long time. She's an amazing role player, has tons of experience, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And, and so she knew, like, not only did she literally know she was leaving the campaign, she also knows how to read a story. I mean, how yes, often of does Maggie deviate from, like, I'm not saying that, that you, you have to lay down railroad tracks for her to chug a lug along, you know, but, but she can see the lines and knows when to play in them and outside of them. And so knowing that she was leaving, she clearly wasn't going to deviate far off course but on top of that i also kind of knew that some shit was going to be going down one for outside two for inside reasons so that's one of the reasons why i wanted to blow up the glass i wanted to make it so like so like it was going to have to be this big fucking sacrificial thing that and it was a, you literally talked about sacrifice for what a session or two prior yep. mm -hmm. uh you know it, we, we fucking had water by the like, you know tens of thousands of gallons you know pouring into the the the, the facility so um, I know I really wanted to push it that way. But on top of that, even just like looking at straight up in character, the, the uh, relationship between Maggie's character and my own, like we both played deeply religious characters. We both played deeply religious characters for gods that are easily explained away as not being actual gods. And I had explained to you guys outside the game many times that like I am loyal to a fault when you kind of get on the inside of my rungs. And so when this scenario was set up and this is the brilliance of, of your setting it up this way had it been like some chintzy you know ride off into the sunset with some new wife it, it could have gone wonky but because like the way that you had set it up I don't, I don't know if it was happenstance or or you had planned it out that way like you know many steps in advance but like why wouldn't my character feel nothing but like oh honor oh I, yeah, love yeah, yeah for the path that that he was taken he being trig was taken um um you know, to ascend into this sort of divinity and whatnot, and and easily standing as a as a bit of like a, 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 a stalwart between him and the rest of the party and what their opinions might be on religion. I mean, obviously, Siam is a is what you would call a militant atheist. Like you know, yeah, like religion's stupid. I hate all people that are religious. <laughs> and and Cora uh, uh, was a uh, Cora's like. Yeah, religion's cool and all, but not when it like messes with me. <laughs> yeah, not when it takes away one of my friends. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, like, I, as far as, like, how far in advance I had planned what was there, a um, few sessions, I knew, I knew general, and I think you, again, I, I pick up a lot of the way I DM from you directly, because, again, you were my DM for almost 20 years straight. Um, you know, I, I had ideas, like, when, when I knew her backstory and I knew the significance of the fish to her people, then I knew, okay, they're not what they seem. In my mind, I was like, there's there's something underwater. I wasn't sure what it was yet, uh, but controlling the fish and, it, you know, there's there's something that uh, she's going to have to discover at some point and set right for the people. Something's going to go haywire. And then when I, we learned that Maggie was going to go, I had to, like, fast forward those plans. Um, and, you know, your your devotion and, her, and his devotion were... Uh, key key parts. I knew Ogre was not going to stop him. I knew uh, Ogre was going to see this, like you said, as an opportunity to become ascended, to to become the thing that they that he worshipped. So I knew Ogre was going to be on board right away. I wasn't sure how Siam and Korra were going to go. That was hmm. that was the big the big if. I didn't know if Siam was going to pull out his blasters and just fucking start shooting the computer terminals and be like, no, we're not doing this. Like that was a big possibility. Um, to be you know, fair, though, that, that wouldn't be a Sion decision. That'd be like Wade realizing he could do something like that, and he's a little, you know. Yeah, of course. He's a couple, he's a couple steps behind. So. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah but we, we keep him around because he's a good, he, you know, he's a... Uh... I, I just blame it I on feel his bad, height. I guess. I, I blame it on his height. The blood flow doesn't get all the way up there. You know? <laughs> and tall people. It's going to be what it is. They're stupider. So, what can I say? Yeah, yeah you know, it's just... It's just <laughs> but yeah, so. I, I, as far as, like, I, I had aspects of it planned ahead of time, but, you know, things were not finalized until I realized Maggie was going to go and then I had to. So, yeah. So actually I'm going to, uh, you know, peek into the, um, I'll actually ask, 
Um, how far in advance did you, because you we obviously knew Maggie was going um, because her last session was two weeks long instead of one. So we knew she was leaving, I think, three sessions. Yeah, three. Kind of like, so, so how early did you plan out that was exactly the, the path that you wanted to take for her? Immediately. For her to so as soon as she said, as I'm going, you're like, you kind of like sat yep. there, like, probably mm-hmm. while dropping a deuce and, and came yep. up with like, yeah. Or taking a shower. I think I was taking yeah, a shower. Showers are actually. one of the best ones. I get oh, like, when, I, when I'm like working on D&D, whether it be for Vampire or for Star Wars, and there's moments I want to have or like, I actually just stand in the shower and I just start narrating and I just yeah. let it narrate until it clicks. And I'm like, there's what I'm looking for. And then, then I'll take that and I'll refine it. And that's very similar how it like that. It was pretty quick. I was like, here's at the bottom. Initially, it's like, okay, what could be at the bottom? A cult? No. Uh, some evil dude, no. I even was like, did Grievous do something on this planet that he had his back up? And I'm like, mm, eh, I don't need everything to be hooked to the main story that feels yeah. excessive. Yeah, uh, especially so for like, a character mm, that no. just got here. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, I was like, that's not like, that's not enjoyable. Trig, you know, why not present Trig with the opportunity to become what he worships? And let's see what he does. So Yeah. No, I, I, I think it, it worked out... Um... It worked out well the the way it was. So I don't know. I, I liked it. It's funny too because like I used to come up with stories like while going for like a jog or like a long walk. But unfortunately, as a dad, yeah, you can't do that those, anymore. Those are conversation times at a very young level. So there's no thinking time there. And I used to like come up with ideas when I was like you know dropping a deuce. But unfortunately, children open. You can't lock the door because <laughs> they might need you. Yeah. So that's not private time either. So so shower time is where it all kind of boils down to like okay. Okay, now is when I have time to like to think in my headspace. So it's, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I learned I learned early too. Like when I first started doing some DMing like seriously on the channel, I was like, okay, well here's the main story, and then here's all the different ways they could do something different. And then no matter how many times you tell me, like you always choose plans. You plan for plans A through like Y, but then they choose plan Z. And uh, I learned that early, so I, I got rid of that. <laughs> like, I stopped planning for contingencies. And I was like, here's the general we, narrative. And however it goes, we just go with it. We, we also talked about this so many times, like, over the years prior to your starting to DM. As, as I've told you a million times, like, that's why I, t- I don't write full stories, you know? And yeah. it's funny because, like, I, I'm not, I can't say any details because, you know, I'm not right now. But I am unfortunately writing a full story right now because it's being asked of me for a thing that I'm, I'm working on. And I'm like... This is fucking hard. Like, I don't write stories out. I don't plan shit out like that. Like, I come up with bullet points, and if I want it to be a little tighter than being completely sandbox open world, I do more bullet points, maybe two pages of book. But I'm, like, kind of half – I'm probably going to half write the story out, including, like – I think I'm even going to be doing descriptive text too. So I won't lie because I don't, that's a weak point of mine. I had to pull on uh, my my future sister-in-law, uh, Aaron, like Rinson, like er- yeah. Eric's, you know, I-, I had to pull her on to be like, yo, can you help me with this? Cause like, <laughs> I don't, I don't yeah, know. man. It's interesting because, you know, when we talk about doing D&D, like the first year of this show was a learning experience for both of us as oh, far yeah. as like, God, the, 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 the playing at a table is different. Is so not only, but, but different. Something the point just, I, I make, just like the relationships that we build with one another, the way we interact with one another, the 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 you know that slap somebody on the knee and like lean over and have a whispered comment. You can't have a whisper like you and Wade can't secret chat like a little whisper while I'm like talking you know to the other PCs because then we can't hear each other. Well, the it's, other the yeah, there's there's that aspect of it, and then there's the aspect of it that you know when you dive into this initially and you want to run a show. You're like, oh, we'll just play D and D, and you know people will like to enjoy it. But then you realize you can't just play D and D. Like you can't just play D and D and be on camera. That's not an engaging thing. It also has to kind of be like a show. Like it has to be a show. You're doing 50% D and D, 50% show. And so the way I've started to D and D, and the way you see me do it, at least in Star Wars and stuff, is like I have one major. It's kind of it's kind of drama TV where there's one major plot, the or the whole thing, and then each episode is a self-contained story where the aspects of the major plot are still tied to it. So that yeah. each episode individually is enticing to watch. It ends with a cliffhanger. And hopefully you either get more questions or you get answers to questions that you already had about the overarching plot. And that's not how I'm used to playing because no. the way I played with you and the way we tried to do it right away, Edge of Morality ran this way, was just open sandbox. Well, so, so we discussed this, I want to say tail end of Edge of Morality, we discussed, or, or it was when we first started the first Star Wars campaign. Yeah. So it was still actually at the very beginning. We discussed that's what we wanted to do. This was our plan. That's what we wanted to do. But I, I was DMing that, and, I, and with 
all, over a decade, like 16 years, whatever it was of, of DM experience of my being like, oh, I can kind of do that. Let me just fine tune it so I can definitely do that, no problem. With the experience of my sessions being eight to 12 hours long. Yeah. So, so then summing that down to four hour sessions with intros, outros, and top, it's only like maybe three ish hours of play. It's like, how do you tell us a mini story? <laughs> it, and I'm long winded. It's a dad. Yeah. It's, it's something you definitely, you're like, we've, Scott, what's your favorite color? And I'm like, well, actually, you know, I want to let you know that when I was a kid, my favorite color was, but yeah. you know, and I was like, <laughs> good old ADHD. <laughs> can't, can't sit there and just explain forever, but it's been fun to watch both of us just kind of change and progress how we end up playing and presenting it as a show as a more entertaining thing, as opposed to just a bunch of friends playing D and D in an open world and fingers crossed, you know, I agree. Edge of morality ruled. I, right. Oh yeah. I love the overall. Somebody Edge, give that man a Snickers. Edge of morality was incredible, but we can't argue that there were a lot of episodes that nothing ended up happening because we start, we were playing it like old school D and D without the mentality of them, especially the earlier episodes, I would say. Um, if we were to revisit Edge of Morality like I'd love to do, I think it would have a similar flavor and theme, but I think it'd be a much more a much more tight experience every episode. And that would be good. Yeah. Well, so anyways, uh, that's a, a lot of chatter about the uh, the ending of the um, uh, the Star Wars yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. game as it is right now. And I, I'm excited to see what we end up doing with Season 3. Um, uh, obviously, no announcements about that whatsoever. Yeah, not yet. I, I'll announce this. You ready for this? <laughs> Mathis and I will be involved. That's very true. Oh, can... Mike will be running it, and I'll be yeah, and you'll be playing. PC, yeah. Ogre but other turn. than that, no, no details. I love no. Ogre. Ogre's a good dude. Oh. He's a fun so, character. Oh, uh, Ogre was fun. Unfortunately, because like we had a few weeks where we didn't play for this reason and that reason, my accents. That I, I honestly think I thought I did a really good job of maintaining mm -hmm. that same accent every time I like, get into the voice. But it was like the last two sessions are awful. I could not <laughs> do it. I was like, why can't I get this voice? <laughs> and, and it was always because like in those by sheer coincidence, the same weeks, I, I, my daughter was supposed to be in bed eight eight thirty ish. We hop on the call eight thirty eight forty five ish. Go live at nine, right? But unfortunately, like she was going to bed late and other things were happening, so I didn't have the, that like five minutes just to sit there and like talk to myself and and like like I don't know, trying to jump into the voice right now. I don't even know if I could do it. Like I need. It's just a, a slow Southern. Day. It's like oh, that's all I want to do. Slow yeah, well, so, so literally, while you guys were like chattering, I would like mute and be like, <laughs> you just be trying desperately. <laughs> I'm just trying to find the voice. Where are you? Oh, trying okay. to discreet, covering my mouth and stuff like that. I'm not calling my show. <laughs> oh, oh well. Anyways, so um, so that that covers up Star Wars uh, uh, for now, which we will come back to it. Um, we don't know if it'll be the the next one we do on Wednesdays or the one after the next one we do on Wednesdays because there are other systems that we still want to try to play. So we'll kind of see so many different out. systems that we'd like to dip into. Yeah, and with this still a seafaring campaign that we want to do with the you know and blah. So moving on, um, Wednesdays, uh, 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 Feyrun. So let's talk a little bit about Edge of Morality. And uh, I suppose just kind of get our juices flowing and chat, please. Uh, obviously, both of us were, were involved in the story and, and you guys were, 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 were viewing it. But all of us, let's, you know, if you have any other reminders or things that we might happen to skip or details you missed while we kind of like go through the basics overview of that story feel free to like remind us or yell at us or, or say your favorite part or whatever but um and yes i know fire yes i know i know fucking bear <laughs> yeah uh, i remember that <laughs> oh jesus all it right so anyway so so that campaign um uh, uh started off um uh, earlier phase it was funny because like you guys are called together to do a job for a dude and it's funny because I, I don't know if i announced this beforehand and i i have so long um, that character that you guys were actually the NPC you guys were going against, the one that um, was the first time I said the C word on screen was him yelling because he was angry. Um, and I was so nervous. I was like, oh God, I'm using bad words on the internet. Um, that, uh, uh, that character was actually uh, completely like, I want to say like 93% based off of uh, my old friend Nick's uh, a PC that he played forever ago, mm. um, Ashram. Uh, was his name and so his whole backstory was like oh hey you know i i was part of a family of extreme wealth and i was going to inherit this extreme wealth and be like the leaders and rulers of um of uh of this chunk of land so in this, this area over here honestly i gotta let me grab a map because i'm being way too big it's i'm annoying myself uh favorite map yes. um no here we go favorite here's the big map it's so big it actually takes 
three seconds to load. <laughs> so, um, uh, where, where were they? Um, not Malhorans, not Fey, not uh, Aglarons, Thesk. So um, you guys started in, I believe, uh, Sant in, um, in, in Thesk. And so uh, his family had an incredible wealth and blah, blah, blah. It was supposed to happen there. Uh, the horde, the, the huge horde came and attacked the lands. This is, you, know, you can read about this in the histories of Faerun. Um, the family fought back and fought back and actually came out as like heroes in the eyes of the people. But to be able to be successful like the way they were, they had to borrow tons and tons of money from the Shadow Thieves Guild. Uh, um, sorry, the Telfalar Shadow Lords was who they had to borrow money from. Inevitably, they, they were like, okay, I have a debt. Let's pay back this debt. And they've been paying this debt for a long time. And then they realized that the interest rate of the debt was so incredibly high that that after paying back their full debt, thinking that they had done well, they realized all they've done was cover the interest. And the interest is so high, they'll just continue to do that moving forward. So the family actually became completely bankrupt. And so... Um, um, he had kind of like come forward and was trying to use you guys as kind of pawns in his own plan of how it is he can take back Thesk. Unfortunately, he didn't realize the forces of the party that he was dealing with. Uh, if you guys were just typical adventurers, or, or actually three of you were, were easily duped enough to, um, to, to kind of go with his plans and, and make things successful. But there was a thunk. <laughs> and, and thunk had a lot of religious motives and, and he actually ended up turning the tides of that whole plot, that whole plan that I had that I had set up for kind of like isolating this this huge story arc to take place in Thesk. Um, uh, he actually um, turned it on its head and it's completely turned the tides against him in the favor of the orcs. And the orcs have a chance. And he was kind of trying to start like a, like a, almost, he made it like almost like a, a small army or cult following or whatever down there to, to start like a revolution in the favor of the orcs. And then you guys peace the fuck out. You guys mm -hmm. hopped on a boat. Yep. And, and went elsewhere. I kind of like did my my thing and, and we left. Yep, and you left for for reasons uh, for Rye. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. Uh, on your travels, there was a storm. You got shipwrecked, and I don't know if you guys remember this, but but somebody almost died. Who who was it that almost died? Was it Dra Thunk? That, I, was it? Uh, I think it was Thunk that almost drowned because they almost drowned. Yeah, because then Barry uses. Was it? I thought Barry used his. Oh, he wanted to use his loot to give me levitate, but it wouldn't have been enough. I thought. Yeah, somewhere along those lines, there's a super dramatic moment, and you guys just barely saved your asses on that island. That island was fun. Yeah, that little fairy island of uh, the little fae causing causing relationship issues, basically. I want to say it was the Isle of Presper uh, in the Sea of Fallen Stars. I want to say the island where it comes from. Yeah, that's where everyone um, came from. Uh, wait, what? Oh, yeah, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. The everyone emote. Yeah. Feel free to, to, to blam, uh, to splat everyone in chat. Um, so anyways, yeah, the everyone emote came from uh, from there. And it was one of those, you know, um, oh, God, that was so much fun. And uh, the way that Maggie played that up and the way that, if I remember correctly, it was who did it first, who did it better? No, not better, not better. It was it was Maggie and Bear. Yep, Maggie the and ones Bear. That really, because who was the one that did the kiss? Who was the one that did the freaking kiss that pulled in and, and gave the kiss and, like, transferred the curse over to somebody else or whatever it was? Was it Was it Otto? Uh, yeah, I think it was Otto with Bear that, that did that. Oh, my God. Uh, it was so fun. Oh, God, it was so funny. There the were some good scenario. moments. And it was a tower of, the, the tower of, um, of illusions that you guys were, were stuck in. And Oh, man. The, the Tower of Illusions was a different scenario. My apologies. It was the everyone one. And then um, so she was fucking manipulating you and all that fun shit. And, and you eventually found a portal, like kind of stumbled across a portal in the base of the tower. That portal, all of a sudden, who jumped through first? I want to say it was... Uh, you was it you the it was two of us. It went went two by two. Um, oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. And you jumped through, and only Gromman still had everyone locked on them, but the the everyone uh, the curse that was on Gromman was hidden by the 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 amulet that's that was right. put around Gromman yeah. Gromman's neck, so it was like suppressed. So you guys forgot that it existed until like in a way later session where the amulet like either lost its magic and came off, and all of a sudden came back up, and you guys were like ah, <laughs> had to deal with it for another hot minute. But you guys appeared in the Sword Coast North, in the Deep North. Actually, you were over in Icewind Vale. And, oh, yeah, that's right. And we had, just we barely started. Found a town. Uh, yeah, you had to find your way to 10 towns. And, and you guys had to survive winter there. You, plot Yeti. Plot, yeah, plot Yeti. Yeti showed up a couple yeah. times over the course of that. It was uh, Plot Yeti. Later on, it was Plot Dart. <laughs> we, we dealt with, we dealt with the trolls or something. Um, the, town, giants. the giants. The giants. Yeah, they want, the town wanted us to deal with something. Uh, we did. I built. I remember building a church. 
Yes, we built a church around fucking um, Skull Crusher. Yeah. Skull yeah. Crusher. Oh, yeah, that's I mean, right. Because we found, we were routing them out. We found like this hidden temple the dwarves built. So I took it and I defiled the fuck out of it over the course of like months of like just ritualistically defiling you, it, you breaking it down, it. reforming it. Yeah, to a yeah. different weapon. Because Skull Crusher was a sword, which people were like, what? Skull yeah. Skull Crusher is a sword? What the fuck? <laughs> because the whole idea of Skull Crusher was, was literally a weapon that was designed to shatter the mind of the person that it was that it was attacked. Whatever. Yeah. Doesn't matter. But it was reformed into a fucking hammer. And so then um so that whole uh, you know bit took place and you guys did that whole story arc and that was fun. But it was around that time that you guys were leaving there that Bear kind of gave us um uh, uh, almost um, a very short like notice that that okay, hey, I'm gonna be leaving, but it but it actually worked out because I was at that point in time I was on Bear and um because you were the main story focus at first. We salt and peppered a little bit of Maggie in there, but I was starting to focus on both Bear and and um and uh Sam's stories and so we actually were passing through an area where he was supposed to become uh, a focal on lyrist yep um uh, school the, yeah so he's supposed to do a little bit of schooling there but it was because the whole idea of bear's story was he had a um a very high quality liar that you know, was given to him and um he wanted to not liar um loot loot yeah loot loot it was i believe and so he was supposed to do the um um uh God, I just remember that 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 battle where fire took place, and you guys were that going. Was, that was a lot. I know it was still back in Ten Towns. So yeah. it, it was during that winter, and oh God, what's his name was there? Das Loot. All right, it was a Das Loot. Das Loot. That's, uh, right, that's, that's right. That's right. Das Loot, because it was one of the seven schools, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, um, uh, the leader of Ten Towns. Uh, what the hell was his name? Begins with a C. Yeah. Uh, Cassius, I think it is. Uh, you might be right. Yeah, Cassius, and um. Um, oh yeah, and so, then Sam pa- made a pact with the demon angel, metallic angel thing to save the party, and which came back later on. Yeah. So, so because uh, that was part of his whole storyline, or, or her, if you're looking at Ryan's perspective. So, anyways, and then, then unfortunately, Bear left us around that time, and and so you we were able to get a couple of fill-ins um, there, kind of like later on. But, but Bear left us, so he went to school, and that was a very sad episode because I mean, he, I, I mean, this is Bear's first ever tabletop game, just like it was for for Wade, his first ever tabletop game. It was like super. It was it was very upsetting to, to lose him. We we enjoyed Addo. We enjoyed. I mean, I got him. Do you, do you have an Addo? Um, yeah, I have all four. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I have all four as well. Yeah. So uh, shout out to uh, Jellyfish Pirate. Um, this, or everybody can tweet at Bear and let him know that we miss we miss Addo. Yeah, we definitely miss Bear. Um. Uh. So anyways, so so that took place. We lost him. Then you guys, because we obviously weren't going to focus on his story anymore, because you guys started traveling. You know, we lost Bear. So you guys started traveling south to really focus on Rai's story, and um, and so you finally were getting to the the the, the Grain Lord, right? Oh yeah, the Grain Lord, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you guys are finding, it, and he's like the Grain Lord. Because by the way, if if you look at like a lot of these things, like if you look at who the Grain Lord is, like if you actually Google Grain Lord and you know, Faerun, Grain Lord, it's a character that actually exists in Faerun. So when we designed, when I found out about what Sam was playing, and and the 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 um. I found out what Sam was playing, and I found out the name and all that stuff. I, I took like little bits of every character and my knowledge of Faerun, and just like morphed their characters into like the the way I wanted to set the huge overarching premises for their characters. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, yeah, Amadora, you're always there lurking. We know you're there. We know you're there. Um, so uh, brought down there to introduce the Grain Lord, and unfortunately, right as we were getting to like the big apex of the story. Um, Sam that, became a dad. Yeah, it was like, he, he just became a dad, I think. <laughs> yeah, right? that, he became so. a dad. His time got crazy, and uh, yeah, it was it was really difficult to. And I think we were I think we were ebbing into the holiday season as well. So it was just like a as as tends to happen with Lost Initiative shows, all things went up in chaos all at once, and yep. uh, Edge of Morality had to fall by the wayside at that point. Um, well, no, not immediately. Uh, no, we, first, we, first we dragged we had, it on a little you know, bit. We had a couple of Splattercat and Sinvicta showed up. And, Dude, uh, Sinvicta, who had never played a tabletop before either, or he did like one session where they bullshitted the rules or something like that. He was so much fun. Yeah, he like, was fun. I, I'm sorry, what, what was his character's name? He, he uh, began, it began with an H. Uh, Ar- Hecarim? No. Um, Hellspawn? No. <laughs> um, Hello, Hello, Hello Kitty? I don't know. I don't what the know. hell was his name? I don't remember. I, I'm, I'm gonna. I, I have to find out. He was a paladin. Hetfield. Hetfield. I was about to go jump in. Midori. Uh, Midori with the save. Thank you, Midori. Hetfield. So so Hetfield was awesome. God, I love that character. And just like yeah, we I got yanked back really... in time via a scroll. Yeah, and and just like the way that he had to play and the way that Splattercat had to get. They, they they came into a campaign like 30 sessions in with so much lore behind it during a time hop thing. 
it was just absolute lunacy. Like it was too much to expect somebody to be able to handle. Wait, do you see what they're doing on Thursday? <laughs> and, and, and they actually did really well in Rambo. I was very appreciative of that. But then as you guys came back from the, um, the the time hop thing inside the scroll, which by the way, it was a scroll that was literally taken from Rai's backstory. Remember everybody had a one session backstory at the beginning of the campaign? Do you remember that? Vaguely, vaguely. Your backstory was, what did we do with your backstory? I don't remember. We all know Maggie's. Maggie's backstory is how we found out that Maggie was, that, that Gromond wasn't always stupid. Yes. Yeah. My, oh, and then my, and then my, in a way later on we found out that for Th you, Thonk's backstory, his backstory was. Oh, do you want me to go over it? It's pretty. No, yeah. no, his whole backstory. What did we go over with that that um that one shot, that solo one shot that we did with his backstory? You remember? No. Because when we did when we brought in Ander later on, Ander was yeah. the one that then revealed that Gromman didn't just go from an intelligent person to a dumb person that day. Gromman legit died. He yeah, actually yeah. did die because he had the ability to see his to see everybody's death around yeah, yeah. him. And when he saw Grommans, he saw Grommans previous. Well, th thanks. It was, it was like a really. I don't know what I'm they sorry, learned. It was that was a fun moment. For oh, it's great. I you know oh. when you when you realize Grommans wasn't just an idiot because he's an orc. You know he yeah. was an no, idiot. No, he, he died. Yeah, he, he died and he came back. Dead for a while. But then the, the the fun part is oh god, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna lore drop an important bit of lore here because I don't know if we'll ever get to uh, unfold this later on. But the the person that brought Grommin back to life was, if you actually once again look into Faerunian lore, old school Faerunian lore, you look at um, uh, what's the name of that con uh, country up in the north? Uh, in the Vasa, the Vasa has Castle Perilous. There was the the Great Lich. Um, I I, I, I want to say his name was literally the Lich King uh, of Castle Perilous. When he was there, ruling that whole land and had his fucking armies of orcs and, and undead and whatnot, there was a group of adventurers. I want to say they were the the, the 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 Silver Chalice was the name of their their um, adventuring group that took over that. This is like an old advanced Sons and Dragons campaign setting, like that you could have done like back in the day. It was funsies, um, but. One of the P, the the, the ca ca uh, canonical um, uh, characters from that was a bard with a ma super powerful magical loot. That bard, who I, I try to drop hints in that game, uh, was feeling remorseful about all the shit that was going on. That's why I try to describe these scenarios of Brahmin's backstory, the three different times that we visited that past. Mm -hmm. um, uh, felt guilty about all the shit that was going on and all the like the innocence that, or effect, like the, more or less, these people were being murdered out of ignorance. They were mm -hmm. being because Grom was part of the, the the Skull Clan or the um, whatever they were called, Clan, the Death Skull Clan or whatever it was. Um, Twenty six months love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the um, it was just ignorance why they were being led to this. And so this Bard felt bad. So when Grommin died the way he did with that little, pff, the Bard actually brought Grommin back to life. And I described that in the way that I, I did that session. But most importantly. I also described the person that, that um, Otto got their loot from. They kind of described where that loot came from or whatever. That I Das loot. That. that Das loot this was the loot back. that was used to bring Grama back to life. Vaguely remember that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So so I did not ever say that outright until just now. A hey, big reveal, but I don't think we're ever going to be able to touch on that in the future. But the whole idea is like hashtag everything's connected. Like th that was legit a thing that I was working on at the time. I, and I'm trying to think if anything came out about my backstory, maybe my father, my character's father, who was just kind of a warrior, more or less. You talked a, a heavy amount about your backstory when you went against the 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 powerful cleric of uh, of Grumsh, and they were like, you know, um, when you were doing that whole thing inside the cave and raising the group. Yeah, of people, like you, going, you met Obold, and you know Obold is Grumsh. Grumsh is Obold. Yeah, yeah, I got that, fucking that destroyed bit. for that. Um, yeah. Um, that whole bit that took place, you actually touched on your backstory because that guy fucking dropped you. Yeah, well, the the because like Thonk's backstory old, is but his son. Thonk's backstory is relatively simple comparatively. Like all it was was like his father was a warrior, um, and his mother probably was killed. If I can't remember what happened to his mother, but his father was a warrior who died in battle when he was a kid, and so Thonk was handpicked by one of the clerics of his tribe, um, and he was basically. Uh, you know, as orcs do, tortured and beaten and, and kind of toughened up. But the lesson this cleric was t was teaching him was like, the orcs, orcs. Nineteen months. Thank you. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Um, his whole uh, thing was the the cleric that was kind of training him and teaching him the ways of, of the of the world, at least for orcs, is that orcs in general are chaotic. They are hard to com control. They need war. They need violence to succeed. But chaos is a means to an end. So behind the scenes, the idea was that there were these clerics out there who tried to guide the chaos to their to their whim, guide the chaos of or of the orc tribes and the orc military to um, 
expand orcish influence in the world because if left unchecked orcs will just kill themselves by just waging endless wars over and over again they have to be they have to be um meaningful they have to lead to something so it, the idea was the clerics were the ones to pulling the strings behind the chaos of the orcs to lead them how are the orcs able to have a kingdom because somebody behind the scenes pushed them to the right direction and led them to the right battles to win that's all his story was for years he was just beaten down and taught over and over divine magics and what it's like to be the one to pull the strings and that you are going to be one of the ones that pulls the strings not one of the ones on the strings and yes everybody is a tool yeah that's that's all that thonks is a pretty it, it, straight I say, forward. I say everything is a tool to uh, a tool of grumption including myself yeah exactly and that, that was an important thing is if you look at all the relationships that you had built with all the party members and you you go into it and if you rewatch that entire series understand that mike had literally said to me in like a text document prior to even first session Everybody is a tool of grumsh, including myself. And then you literally look at the way that he interacts with every single solitary PC, every NPC, the entire while. You can see that that is super heavy handed early on. And then later on, it gets character like little, it can, yeah, it's a little wonky. Little character but, direction change because of the party. No. Uh, he was lawful evil, correct. He was not chaotic evil. No, no God, no, no, no. Lawful. If he was chaotic evil, he wouldn't have lasted very long. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He, he was, he was, he was lawful evil. He was one hundred percent lawful evil. And, and that was that we walked into it going, you, you were leaning lawful well, the big... or neutral evil. You weren't sure, but the reason why you decided to go lawful evil is because one, you knew you'd enjoy playing it more, but also two, you knew that it'd be easier to stick to the party and yeah, that's correct. not be not be chaotic, stupid, and, and all that. Yeah, no. Nonsense. And that, that was, like, the big end to his character arc. I knew, like, turning back and fighting that, that guy and, and potentially losing Thonk altogether. That was supposed to be a big character moment because that was the moment he turned around and decided to put friends before before his goals. He already won the fight. They were letting him go. They were like, we'll find you and your friends later. And it was them threatening his friends that he turned around and was like, I'm going to kill you or I'm going to die trying for even threatening them. And that was, like, the, the turning point where you could argue he went from lawful evil to neutral evil in that moment. Um where he cared more about his companions more than, than about his God in that moment. Well, so. well, it was so many, it wasn't, it was, it wasn't even just a God. It was your companion. So it wasn't just that. Cause I agree. I completely agree. That was like the big character development moments. And it came at a cost. Right. Mm -hmm. But it was also about the spite. Like that was one of the things that you have to understand about, about Thonk is Thonk doesn't make a promise that he doesn't intend to use every aspect of his being to follow through on. Mm -hmm. And so when he was moral, he, he would rather sacrifice himself to confirm the pain and suffering of others yes. to the benefits of his friends and his cause and so on and so forth than... Uh, I'll get you next time, you yeah. meddling character. Yeah, because I killed. Yeah, that's right. Because I killed that that dude's mother. So, so I'm gonna t I'm gonna touch on that in one, one, one sure, second. Sure, sure. The, the idea of like Thonk was was a lot of fun, but but it was just really fun because Obold was literally like the greatest thing that ever happened to the orcs of yes. Gayrune canonically. Um, if you read the uh, Ari Salvatore series or any other books that are written about that that time era, uh, if you um, play Fourth Edition. God rest his soul. Um, <laughs> on on um, uh, and read like what happened over the course of that hundred years skip that they did. Um, uh, Obold was one of the greatest things that ever happened to the orcs. But your character was saying, "No, you are misinterpreting Grumsh. I intend to stand against that and schism off of the core uh, uh, of the canon of what is supposed to happen in the series." So, so the fact that you died is either a because that's the way it was intended, or yeah. or just because you know it was just huge character growth, and, and I don't know. I love Thonk. I would like to say that the story of Thonk has not finished. I would like to say that. But speaking of Thonk, stories about Thonk, how he died, that battle on the bridge, how that came to be, um, I was actually very excited about that that combat. Um, I knew that it was going to come. I knew that it was going to happen. I knew the likelihood of of um, him dying was was I want to say it was I, I walked into it going there's a 65 to 70 percent chance that Mike that Thonk is going to die in this combat I need to approach him with that mindset like he is going to die Mike is a very very good role player and so I knew he was going to try try some sort of Tom fuckery and, and he did uh, and and successfully <laughs> but I had a, a good uh, um, idea that he was going to die going into that so what I did over on my channel when I was um, uh, I think I may still have been Dale Rick Master at the time. Uh, Dale Rick, you can actually go to YouTube slash Dale Rick and you can see the um, um, Skull Crusher mini series that we had over there. 
Um, it was, I read a little short camp. I want to say it was like three or four sessions where I had other PCs entirely unrelated to this campaign. Uh, Frank, shout out, control Frank, uh, love you, brother. Um, almost never get to see you anymore because you're uh, now West Coast and, and very busy as like a teacher or something. But um, uh, much love to Frank. Um, they played uh, three dwarves and an elf that was adopted by a dwarf. So an all dwarf and effectively party um uh that stumbled across the news because one of them was a paladin of dumathoin dumathoin being the god who the hammer was a tribute to yep. um because it was the secret under the mountain when you guys were fighting the and it was discovered and so that so um so he when it was destroyed he felt it and so like they traveled there and they came across your your clergy and they took it back and they uh and he even though i i told him, like this is now made a minor artifacts like a week a minor artifact in the, in the name of Grosh, you as an orc holding it and you as the opposing alignment holding it, you actually have level penalties. Go, so when when um, when they finish the story arc successfully getting the hammer and holding it and actually winning a fight with the hammer in hand, that was a fun little story arc that they did there. When you met them on the bridge, even though I want to say he was like, I want to say you're like level six. Top yes, five. right around there. And I want to say they were all level five. Um, but that hammer in his... Uh, no, actually, I want to say... Three of them were level five, and he was like level seven. But the hammer in his hand made him effectively like level four ish or something like that because it was giving him like uh level penalties, which is an old school mechanic from pre 5e. And um, and uh, uh, so what you did, and this is the brilliance of you because they're like, We're gonna kill you, motherfucker. And, and you're like, If you're a man of honor, then you'll fight me one on one. Oh, that's like, right. And it was, yeah, and yeah. he was like, Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so you did. You fought him one on one, and he hurt you, but I won. You won. Yeah. You fucking you killed the guy. You straight up it killed was his him. mother. Yeah. You should, no, 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 no. You killed him. It had nothing to do with anything. You killed him. And so the mother. No, no, no. You killed him. And so the others threatened your. Uh, so, so because he wasn't a mother. He, this is this is the the dude, the male uh, the, we have the hammer. The mother character is actually played by Aaron. Uh, that character is played by uh, Control Frank in the when they originally. Oh, that's right. They had to press yeah. one, and, then and Ollie him. played right. the barbarian, which you guys all know. So Ollie. yeah, killed him. Killed him. I can't remember exactly how it played out. So next, they but, res- uh, I, I, they resurrected, and they had they used all they used all their diamond dust that they had to bring him back, and they threatened my friends. No, 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 no. Take it back a step. So you killed him, and that's all fine and well. That's that that wasn't a big deal. But for some reason, and I honestly am missing this detail here, and I'm so sorry, everybody. Please feel free to remind me. Um, uh, you ended up fighting the mother of the party. I think mm-hmm. she threw a spell at you, breaking the bonds that you guys had originally. And so you went at her, and you fucking touched her face and murdered that's her. That's right. That's right. And so that that's when uh, the character was actually played by Tanta Strakovin. Um, uh, his character, which was the elven cleric that was the adopted child of Eren's dwarf, um, uh, he was like, Mother! That's right. And like That's ran right. over That's and right. diamond dust and revivify and brought it back to life. He's like, Oh, mother, I saved you. And she, and she like looked at you. This is because I'm playing the character that Eren would play. This is a stone sorceress. Um, uh, she's just most like, you can get away now, motherfucker, but I'm going to hunt down your friends. I'm going to make them suffer for what you have done to That's our right. god. And you were like, threaten my friends. And this is when you went back at them and you- I you, killed her again. You, you killed her again. They didn't have the means to resurrect her, so you were screwed there. And this is when Ollie's character, which was the uh, uh, like the totem or the, the religious barbarian dwarf with the big spear and actually the way ollie played that character too he was like very unrefined like um i don't even think he was a i think he was a worshiper in dumathoin maybe not have been but it was like a, a very backwards barbarian like a you know like uh could speak but couldn't read yeah uh, didn't necessarily shower you know cloths um not to be uh, confused with the um the rage did you ever read the 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 um salvatore series or nope, no i've never read them okay not to be confused with the uh, somebody in chat that read that series remind me of what the name of the dwarves are. There's a prestige class for in, in the 3.0 books. Um, the spikes on them and they grab you. And then, what the hell are they called? They call? Spiky hugs. Yeah, they would like they would, like, <laughs> they would literally just like wrap their arms around you and sh- and shake, and you would like rip open in the description of like blood pouring down there. They wouldn't bathe either, so they just have matted blood in their big beards. God, I cannot think of what they were called. Battle rager. Battle rager. Battle rager. That's what oh, Neo, yeah, yeah, Neo, Neo Man. Neo. Thank, there you thank go. You, Neo Man. Battle ragers. So it was not, it was this was legit barbarian esque. So it did the whole spear and literally skewered you through the chest yep. into the, uh, into the, like, I was already low on hit points like, at that point. 
Yeah. And it so, was, it was the whole like arm storm behind you through your chest. You were pinned to the, to the, yeah, I died on the bridge. <laughs> yeah. And so that was just, oh God, that was just great really was and, and i i think while that was sad and amazing and while it was so much fun i honestly have to say one of the most exciting parts of that moment was even though it was unfortunately short-lived we got to meet ander and oh, ander was yeah. a character that we played very 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 briefly mm -hmm. uh in an old game fucking loved ander you use that character as the basis of your uh thing that you did the cartooning thing that you did with mm -hmm. um with disney yep. forever ago um, which video still up there? You can still go watch it. Yeah. Um, any old Mathis fans know know um, uh, what what I'm talking Weavers. about? Or, Weavers. Or, Weavers. That's what it was called. Yeah. yeah. It was all based off of this character that we had, you know, designed forever ago, and da da da, which was pretty cool. So we actually got to see him come live. And I won't lie, like think about all the story bits that we got to have take place when, and then the the, the special alcohol that you got that, like, I mean, that was that was a lot of fun. Yeah. You know? Like I, I, I really I like my weird characters. <laughs> no, I, I really liked that character. And unfortunately, Divination kind of, Wizard. Yeah, yeah, it was it was Divination Wizard. We didn't go full cheese. We didn't go full ham though. Yeah, no. uh, we was it was a no, not a halfling. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. I appreciated the fact that you were like, oh, let's you know, let's kind of like lean into this a little differently, and and you did not do an annoying gnome. You didn't do my my Sid. If anybody nope. knows Sid from Ollie's campaign, that um, Mystic One. That's right, Mystic One, Divine Wizard. I, oh, that's right. You're you're cheese. It was, um, well, guys, hi, hi. Was yeah, it wasn't well, that. Actually, let me tell you about this thing over here, because, you know. <laughs> wasn't that. <laughs> it definitely was not that. It wasn't uh, I like Ander. I, I, a lot of my more interesting concepts are characters that are backseat characters, now that I think about it. Uh, Ander's a backseat character. The Dwarven Binder's a backseat character. Thonk is a backseat character. A lot of them are out of the spotlight characters that only have moments. You know, but I like that. Like, I like those characters that you just kind of stay in the back. The problem is, Ander was meant to be a backseat character, but because of... Well, everything was falling apart, apart at that point. <laughs> he, he ended up sitting way too close to the front. And, because it was literally, it was you and Maggie. And, mm -hmm. and I'm sorry, but Garamond can't be a front seat character. Just, just can't. Mm -hmm. Like, not without... And, and we were literally pushing, like, ideas of how Garamond could, could eventually, like... I don't know. I don't, I don't want to say anything fuck because we're probably never going to be able to explore the whole story arc again <laughs> i guess i so part of the idea of the reason why otto with his whole story arc, i'm not going to go into that everything about it beyond how we got his loot the reason why that loot was in his hands and why it was so important everything like fucking tied together was because otto was literally going to be able to heal grauman's mind like otto was literally like one of the things you have to know about the the school of dos like uh, uh when he eventually was able to, to learn that because it was he was going focal on lyrist and Lily Robbins going to learn other schools. Or he was literally going to be the person that eventually mended Grauman's mind and gave Grauman back the former minds that, that he once had in his youth. And uh, it was more or less going to be like, hey, Maggie, here's a bunch of attribute points. Have fun. <laughs> have, have, it's true. Have we seen Mathis play a high charisma character? Jack. Jack is a high charisma character. Jack is a very high charisma character. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's his. He has words. Yep. Yep. Um, uh, it is one of those things where, um, uh, unfortunately high charisma characters, it can only, like, there are only so many ways to play a high charisma character in, in, um, uh, depending on the setting that you're put in. So it's like so hard because like, I love Jack, I love his concept, so on and so forth. But like, um, it, it's one of those things where I, I would have a hard time seeing Jack with that party dynamic with that world that he's in being played a particularly different way. Wait, Jack in, in Faerun? No. In oh, person. okay. Sorry. Yeah, okay. So so he's a very high charisma character. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But, I play, but I, he's like that spunky all over the place. High yeah. I, I just don't see him as being that smooth, cool drug dealer like that. Oh, that's cool. Everybody just be calm. I got this. Because like, it just didn't make sense for the party dynamic. He needed to be bigger. He needed to be larger than life. Um, you want to you wanna stream exclusive? What? Uh, Bear would be interested in wrapping up the story in a couple of months after he's done with uh, moving. <laughs> I've been talking to him a little bit. He'd be interested. No, no, no solids yet because he's in the middle of buying a house and all kinds of other stuff. So. Ex excuse me. But uh, excuse Bear, me? Bear would be down. Bear would be down to wrap the story up. I, I said like a few weeks, you know, and ideally a few weeks thing. Um, we wrap up that story. I gotta get a yes from Sam. Still, that's gonna be the hard one, I think. But uh. We would have to. I would have to have a. I don't, uh, don't worry about that right now. So, where, where, so, he so, said. He so, said. No, 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 I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna just 
I'll say this bit. So to make sure that this works for everybody involved, because obviously Maggie with her job, Sam with being a, a, a newer dad, which when we first started Lost Initiative, like literally session one of Lost Initiative was I believe a week and a half to two and a half weeks be before my daughter's first birthday. So I understand the whole dadding thing for, for this shit. Uh, I was also still managing restaurants 60 plus hours a week while still learning web development. To like, I get it. It's, it's fucking hard. Um, uh, but if we can make that work, I have to choose more or less like one and two halves stories and then like really lean in hard onto those to make sure that we get yeah. it good. So I already know which one I need to make happen just because it was, yeah, I know, you know, For and sure. I already know the other one I need to make happen. It's just kind of like, what do I do it? I suppose I know the three. <laughs> I think I just made up my mind. <laughs> we, can, we can figure it out when it happens. Uh, if it happens again, it's nothing, nothing solid yet, but just he's interested in, in returning and in. Thanks so much geographically. <laughs> Faerun's too big. If Faerun is huge. Faerun is oh, that's huge. too big. Oh. Bear was in my stream a week ago and I talked about EOM and was fangirling over him. <laughs> Bear was great. Otto was phenomenal. Uh, that whole group was really fun. I, 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 I don't regret it, and I don't wish. I, it's weird. I also wish we had started EOM a year after we had understood how streaming D&D was going to go. You know what I mean? But then we never would have had Sam. I know. That's why I was just like, ah, it's so tough. Like, I can't – I don't regret it in any way, but I wonder how it would have gone if we had tried, you know, later after we had gotten some experience under our belt. I, I honestly – if you want to talk about regrets for streaming and lost initiative, my only regret for streaming lost initiative, my true regret was not offline playtesting and truly learning the rules to FFG prior to our first time ever playing it. I think that um, um, not knowing the rule system was a huge, like, I think that I, uh, I, th I really feel like did we... not bring enough to the table with that first campaign with, with Jesse and Crendor and whatnot, because I was struggling to even understand the baser concepts of the rules. And think about it, only about, let's say, two months ago, did we fully understand every part of all, all the high level... It, 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 it's it's frustrating. Well, that, that it's frustrating just because that game seems simpler than it actually is. When you first yeah. start reading the book, you're like, "Oh, this is wicked easy." We even made a video about the rules, which we were right. The rules we went over and how they work, we understood them. But when you start playing them and trying to put them into action, it's way different. And then when you want very specific answers, the game doesn't give you those answers because it's a very vague game. Uh, Barry Allen. Um, uh, first of all, shout out Barry Allen. Actually, got a Lost Initiative tattoo. He did. So much love to you, buddy. Like seriously, that was as uh, super badass. If you ever look at his uh, Twitter, you can see he has a picture of it on there. It's fucking awesome. I think he did it himself too, which is again super badass. Much appreciative. Love the love. Uh, but actually, so um, Rise Patriot. I will say this: that one time when we were streaming and we were kind of like really deep into the lore of um, of Rai and uh, her backstory and everything. Somebody in chat that um, I've talked to many times are part of the False Pretenses community. Uh, I don't want to say who because I don't want anybody to ever be able to go back. Somebody that I've actually done, like, I've online met before and everything. They actually 100% with complete accuracy guessed who the patron was and listed out reasons why that would be the patron. And I was like, every fucking nail <laughs> on the head. Like, every, every, I was like, Oh my God, you are a super nerd. I can marry you right now. I think I just broke my chair. <laughs> That's funny. I, uh, yeah, there's those people out there who just have that knowledge. Yeah, for those who are asking, the playlist is here. If you want to watch Edge of Morality, that's the whole playlist. There's 134 videos in there. So honestly, trying to port that over to Lost Initiative is way too hard. It to would be, but, but you do have the playlist as a favorite on Lost Initiative. So, you, yep. so you can and it's find in it, and there it is right there as well. So. Yeah, you can yeah. you can watch everything there. Yeah. So um. Anyway, so yeah. All right. Yeah. That that kind of. Uh, did we miss any major details? Summing up of that story. Oh, oh there was. Okay. Uh, uh, another big thing. Like I'm just gonna say thank you to the community that's been here from the beginning. Um. We had a a thunk bomb. Uh. Uh. Twitter that was made. That's right. We had a what was the name of the eagle? Gre Gregory. Oh shit, Gregory the eagle. I think is right. Yeah. Right. Right. Um. Uh. Fucking. Uh. Or or no not. The, whatever the Eagles' fucking name was, a uh, uh, Twitter page was made. And I feel like there was a third one that was made as well that I could be forgetting. Um, oh, super yeah, funny. Yeah, Gregory was right. Yeah, Gregory. That's oh, funny. that was you, Tiger? 
<laughs> oh, that's awesome. Hey, that's Gregory awesome. Robinson. <laughs> oh, so funny. So funny. And there were like a couple of like goofy, there's not many of them, but there were like a few really funny fucking tweets of, of it just like talking as the Eagles. Anyway, I, I appreciate it. It was really fun. Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, you know, th- th- that's right. We also did um, Fancy Feathers. Yeah, that's right. Fancy Feathers. Because there was we, the big eagle, which was, between, was the intelligent between, one, and there was the little one. And then we also did that little mini vampire campaign between. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, you know, uh, Nika and whatnot's uh, still over in the Lost Initiative uh, 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 Discord and everything with us. Um, that was a lot of fun. I mean, John uh, Bolds, mm-hmm. wicked fucking cool guy. John's um, a good dude, yeah. It was, mm-hmm. was a lot of fun meeting meeting him. Um, Emmy, I could live with never meeting again. Like, <laughs> I'm cool with that. And I never got to come back. Change. Nope. No, you did not. Never, you did not get I to come back come after back two in. years of starvation. Um, yeah, I actually completely knew the mindset that I was going to get into. I remember what I said my mindset was going to be. I am unfortunately not in that mindset anymore. So let me get, let me tell you, we're fucking talking stores, you know, meta shit anyways. Um, we still intend, um, and this is why we keep saying things like if, if, if Star Wars immediately after this little small story ends, uh, if, if, if after this small story ends, if Star Wars is in the next one, we might be doing something in between here and there. One of the big ones that Mike and I were talking about was doing our Forsaken game. Because one of the things that Mike and I really want to do is have multiple uh, uh, White Wolf games in the same universe where the stories are somewhat tied to one another. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm very excited. Oh, yeah. I know you love Werewolf. Werewolf is like oh. your favorite. And where Vampire's mine. <laughs> I know you don't like vampire. I know, <laughs> but I do. I like um, it a lot. I'm in love with my um, sexually ambiguous sister, and um, I wear no shirt, but I'm super ripped, <laughs> and I cut myself. It's not like that. Uh, and my my eye shadow, it's so heavy. Ugh. So heavy. Yeah, let's have them play mummy. Let's have them play okay. mummy instead. No, I keep saying Geist. Geist is my second favorite. I think that's a happy medium between what your favorite is and what my favorite is. I think Geist, Geist is, is a perfect good. happy medium. I, I think that you could hit all those like notes of everything that you do. Oh, I just like horror. I'm good. I've realized I'm pretty damn good at horror. <laughs> I'm good at like storytelling horror stuff. Hmm. That's just my, my shtick. I mean, yeah, well, you saw that when you came and did a, a, a three session uh, thing over on my channel. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Hunger. What was that? What was that? Um, Fuck. What was the name of that game? The Forgotten. Uh, just like us. Just like us. Just like us. Oh, I loved that that three session thing. That was just like yeah. us. Was a lot of fun. Yeah, that was a, that was a lot of fun over on. On um, on my channel, which we did for it, it was while while Lost and Shit was in hiatus after things fell apart. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah like yeah, we, pieces. <laughs> we need to do something, <laughs> and that could have led into a Geist game. Yeah, with how that ended. And yeah, honestly, yeah. So. yeah. So uh, like I, I found my niche in like World of Darkness is like my specialty. Scott's is D and D of all flavors. <laughs> that I can just never do. Uh, yeah, yeah. We there might be a new vampire video game. Actually, they're teasing it right now. Which I'm very, very super excited for. Yeah. Holy vey. So um, uh, let me. Uh, I don't know. Is there anything else that that we were thinking about? Because like literally after the stream ends, uh, which is, I will lie, relatively soon from now. Um, uh, after this ends, the, what we're immediately jumping into is jumping into a call with Wade and Patrick Static and and um, and because <laughs> is that person is that person confirmed? Did you read uh, Discord? Is that perfect? I have not been being able to keep up. Do you want to type over there? So um, uh, just see confirmation. See if they're hopping onto the call when when we start it. See if they're confirmed for playing. Yeah, because then I'll say their name, which I have no idea who that is. So I have to Google that person. So Uh, this is this is how I do everything. When Mike when Mike told us like, oh, guess what? We're having you know Jesse Cox and Crendor are coming into. Yeah, it looks uh, like he's gonna be part of it. Tyler. Okay, cool, cool. So uh, when when he said Cox and Crendor are gonna be coming into it, I was like, who? (laughs) 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 So I always have to Google these people. So this is uh, Apocalypto 12, uh, Tyler, I want to say she. So uh, Apocalypto 12, if, uh, sorry. Uh, Apocalypto- <laughs> don't, 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 I do, yeah, I don't know. That's this is Discord name. Yeah, no, Apocalypto underscore 12. I just Googled it on, on Twitter. I Googled it on Twitter. So assuming that's the same person. I imagine. Yeah. It looks like the same person's picture just blown outwards to be funny. So I believe, I believe that's it. I think so. Works yeah. for me. I'm gonna say that's the person. Yeah, that works for me. There we go. Yeah, well, yeah, the castle. Yeah, we got Bob, Wade, Ethan, and Tyler. It's just uh, with Mark coming too. I think Mark might be a little too busy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
But uh, yeah, everybody else, they've all, I guess they've all really wanted to be trying some D&D stuff. So uh, we'll, we'll drag them in. All right. Well, is that everything then? Yeah, my apology. I was saying that after this, we're, we're going to start with hop on a call for that. We're going to do that recording. We're going to start working on characters. I'm wicked excited to see where things go. Um, I don't know if there's anything else that... Um, I don't know if there's anything else. That, uh, I, uh, I think that's it, man. I think we got all the announcements out. We talked about what we needed to talk about, and now we oh, got Oh, Patreon! Oh, like, that's right. I wanted to say so. Patreon. So like I said, the, the little recording that we're doing, we're going to throw it out for, for our Patreon. I don't know what tier we're going to throw it out, probably five dollar tier or something like that for anybody that's there if they want to see the charge in and the bullshit and everything that we do. Wade's involved, probably lots of dick jokes. Let's be serious. So if you like dick jokes, um, then then you can totally uh, hop on for that. Uh, but seriously, um, I'm running both the games. So um, you know where and when, uh, timeline wise, uh, the one game is taking place and you know for the other game because you literally just saw the other season end. So feel free to hop on to Patreon if you are so gracious enough to, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, yeah, support us in that way. Uh, throw on items that you want to do. Throw on uh, NPCs that you want to counter them, that you want to be for them. You can be, I, I like it when you're a little bit more vague. Uh, sometimes people will throw out, like, full-blown character sheets, and I feel bad because sometimes the character sheets that you throw forward, I'm like, I appreciate the amount of work that you put into this. Clearly, it was not a small amount of time. Unfortunately, it does not fit the, like, at one point in time, and um, just to be a little specific, um, somebody had literally asked for a dark side user to be put into the game, and I'm like, I can't do that. I can't put a dark side user into the game because Mike, in his meta world, has specifically said, I don't want any force users being put in unless I specifically put them there. Mm -hmm. um, so so I, I can't do that. So be a little vague with what you want. If you literally just want to say, hey, listen, I just want a character to go in there to be a mathless love interest to fuck him over. If I, listen, I just want this character to go in there. I don't care what they do. This is kind of like their personality or what they look like. And, and at some point in time, they're going to piss in Wade's shoes. I don't care what you come up with. Just just do something. And and um, I will run with it. I'll have fun with it. You'll clearly know that it's your character. Uh, at the end of the session that I introduced that character, um, I could totally give a shout out to who it was that came up with it. That's fine. Um, um, but please feel free. And yeah, magic please. items, I do always want to say that if you do come up with a magic item for either of the games, understand this. Cursed items are magic items too. You know? That's true. F over Cursed the party, items, magic items too. F us and, over. And, and I'm, I'm very much in the camp of if you cast identify on a cursed item, it doesn't say, oh, well, guess what? This is cursed. No, 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 no. If you guys magic, I, I did find a magic a, a cursed item. They see it as what they think it is, but there's magic, kind of like, yeah. unless of course they make some sort of check or, you know, there's like, I'll, I'll, I'll give them a small loophole, but don't worry. I got you. <laughs> you can well, screw over Wade as much as you want. Yeah, maybe maybe Wade gets a pair of boots that piss just fills up every morning. Like, why are <laughs> every, my boots always wet? Whenever he puts his boots on, it just gets soaked in pee. Uh, wait, <laughs> or... Listen, you could be nice. Well, on that, <laughs> we'll be back. Uh, so we'll be back tomorrow um, with uh, more character stuff. Leveling up. Dark side, uh, Dark Sun, rather. Me and Wade will be uh, holyifying and deifying our characters a little bit and leveling ourselves up. And then next week, ideally, will be the first session of one of the new, the new Wednesday campaign, so long as everything goes according to plan. So, on that, thank you guys for listening to us uh, for announcements and chatting and um, going over some of the new stuff and recapping some of the old stuff that will be important in the future. Uh, we will uh, we will return tomorrow night, and uh, this will be up on the YouTube channel tomorrow at some point. And if you're a subscriber, immediately thereafter as one of the VODs, we sincerely, sincerely, sincerely appreciate all the support you guys have just been giving us over the past couple of years. The long-term subs, the long-term Patreon, the new ones on both sides. It really does help kind of push the show forward and continue to... Uh, allow us to, to chug along and, and keep putting out new content and tell new stories with new friends. Uh, it's just been a lot of fun to do this for a couple of years and hopefully it continues on for quite some time. I, I will say one more thing before we go, uh, just back to hammering the Patreon point. When we do announce that we're going to be doing the Star Wars again, please, um, everybody that does subscribe to the 25 uh, level tier of Patreon, you can make an NPC. Yes. There will be a time skip. You can make an NPC that is Wade's child. Uh, you can do that. You can make Siam's children. As the that DM, is, is I won't even say no. I will definitely say you can do that. I'm in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I don't know like, how it would work because you know humans and Bothan, but uh, there's yeah. uh, it's Star Wars. There's science, genetic splicing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, no, stuff. no. I think Bothans are. I think Bothans can canonically uh, breed with humans. It's I, possible. I they can. They're gonna I'm, have. I'm to. almost positive canonically there is a half Bothan in in like. I have like, to see. I'm, I want I mostly just want to know what the hell they look like. 
Yeah, well, that's that's your head canon, right? You get to make that up, but Absolutely. or or whoever it is that subscribes to that that Patreon's here at that time. But definitely, like we're talking like as many people do it. That's how many children think about it. He's and, a and if you want, and like, you, there's a litter, that, that it, could be yeah. like five or right? Six. So what a bunch of you should get together and create the, your own individual child, <laughs> so yeah. that there's like three or four from the litter of puppies that she ended up having as a human. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that's wonderful. And you know, I as a as a think about it, it's almost midnight. It's almost Valentine's Day here on the East Coast, and I think that that's one of the best ways that we can express love. Happy Valentine's Day, Wade. Happy Valentine's Day, Wade. You know. <laughs> and on like... that, <laughs> we're gonna bounce. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. <laughs>